Hey everybody, Haku here with my One Piece live reaction bingo for chapter 1123. I'm incredibly excited for this one, which might seem weird since for you patrons and member er, patrons and channel members, this is a little bit late. So honestly, all day Thursday I was just waiting for the scans to come out. I was like, okay, when are they gonna come out? I'm I'm gonna record this now. A couple hours later, I'm like, oh, I'm doing this other thing. And every time I'd be like, is it out? I can record right now. Didn't come out on Thursday for me. And then yesterday, I'll be completely honest with you, I literally got to like almost midnight and then I was like, I completely forgot One Piece existed. So today, finally, it's a bit late. It's already nearly midnight again, but I'm finally getting a chance to record. The reason I'm bringing this up, if you don't already know, I always say at the beginnings, patrons and channel members get these One Piece videos when the scans come out and then I post them publicly for everybody when the official translation comes out. That is, uh, yeah, that's about it, I suppose. So I'm, I'm really excited because I... I feel like I go back and forth on current One Piece where sometimes we just get a string of chapters that are really, really good. Like we get a really good set of chapters and sometimes we get some stinkers. So it's like we're going back and forth when it comes to current One Piece. But man, the past like a lot of chapters, in my opinion, have been really good. I have loved the ending to Egghead. I think the ending to Egghead is like reigniting a lot of my hype for One Piece in a lot of ways. And I really think it was the best ending to an arc in a while. Maybe even all of the post time skip arcs. It might be the best post time skip arc finale. It was really good to me. I loved it. And going from here, there's so much more for us to learn like there's so many things going on we haven't seen any of the other yonko like shanks or blackbeard what they're currently doing in a bit um not in like detail or anything i don't think we're quite gonna see them here because we always jump around and do stuff between arcs but we did a lot of that during the arc for egghead so i don't think we're necessarily gonna do that for the Yonko, I think we're probably going to pretty soon, if we're going to Elbaf, which it seems like we are, we'll probably see what happened to Kid and Law sooner rather than later since Beppo was, I believe, taking Law to look for the Straw Hats, plus uh, Kid got defeated off the coast of Elbaf, so we could be getting Law and Kid stuff soon. That's something we could be seeing. Uh, also, when we had the stuff going on with Kobe and Garp and everything, on Hachinosu, Perona was presumably off screen rescuing Moria so we could see some Perona Moria stuff. There's a lot going on with pretty much all of these characters and I don't, because we jumped around so much during the arc, I don't know how much we're going to jump around right this moment. I do think we're going to be going to Elbaf next. And this, because I can't really think of a real main antagonist unless we get Big Mom and Kaido by extension coming back in order for Luffy to get his 1v1 win on Big Mom so that throughout the course of the series he can get a 1v1 win over these big legendary Yonko pirates. Um, unless Big Mom comes back to be the antagonist for this arc, and I guess even if she does, I don't think we really need to spend a long time at Elbaf. Elbaf could be a Zoe type arc where, remember, we left um, a really big arc in in uh, Dressrosa, and then on Zoe we kind of just regrouped, got some lore drops, and found out where we were going next. And Wano could be a similar sort of thing. And Jack was an antagonist, but he didn't do a whole lot. It could be a similar thing. We could have an antagonist, but they don't do a whole lot. Maybe it's Big Mom coming back, but again, Luffy just beats her one-on-one. -on -one, and it's not a huge, huge ordeal. Um, maybe even that is the only huge ordeal, is just that 1v1. And the other characters aren't really doing as much. But I think that we're going to go there. We're going to get some deep lore drops and we're going to figure out where we're going next. I've said it before. I think we really only have a couple islands left in the series. I mean, I know this is supposed to be the final saga. So once we get through Elbaf, which might not be that long. I mean, maybe there's some like deeper Luffy Law Kid stuff here for all I know. But it doesn't really feel like Law or Kid are going to be actual antagonists, of course. So I think we're going to get some stuff here, some more information. And one of the big things that we had recently with that big panel, who's going for the One Piece, we see like 12 to 16 characters. It feels like the candidates for One Piece, the candidates for not really Pirate King, but who gets the One Piece in the end and everything, have been narrowed down to like a dozen or so 
candidates, essentially. And I think that each of these final arcs is maybe going to keep narrowing that down a little bit more and more. So we might get some other characters taken out by other characters. Like, say, it, I think it'd be more meaningful if Shanks and Luffy do have some kind of, like, face-off, even if it's not really a fight at some point in the future. But say Shanks gets taken out by Blackbeard or something like that. Just to use an as an example, I think maybe these numbers are going to get dwindled down just a little bit in Elbaf, or maybe we're just going to more concretely, you know, establish where we're at right now. And then going on from there, I think each of the last few arcs are going to keep narrowing that number of contenders for Pirate King. We're gonna, we're gonna continue to narrow that down as we go on. I think Moon Arc is a really good shout for the next arc after Elbaf, just because to me, I've been saying it a lot, Oda has specifically made use of all of these villains that were important. So like Luchi still, even after this, there's some stuff that Oda's doing with him and with the other two CP0 members that were there. So there's still some stuff that's going on with those characters. Crocodile is of course being used in a really important place. And the only one that we really haven't been having that for is Enel. So we haven't seen Enel yet. And of course, Oda has used all of the worst generation for something, except, except, um, Uruj yet. And there's an easy connection there with Uruj and Emil. So, or Enel. So I think that we're going to have Enel and Uruj play a role, not in Elbaf, that doesn't make as much sense, but maybe we get some giant Jack and the Beanstalk going up to the moon. We get some kind of something, and this ties us into the moon arc, maybe. I do think we get a moon arc at some point. If anything, it sounds like, you know, you would think maybe the moon could be related to Laugh Tale, but then if we're getting into Enel stuff up there, that almost seems too important for Enel. So I think that maybe moon arc is up next, uh, sort of like a similar thing. Maybe Elbaf is kind of like our Jaya going into moon arc, which is like our next Skypiea. And maybe during that again, somebody like the God Knights or Garling could come in as an antagonist and get taken out and taken out of contendership for the One Piece there. And then from that point onward, there's really just Hachinosu, which might be a full arc. I think it should be a full arc because it's so important to the, um, to the whatever port, whatever port, Rocky Port incident, was that what it was? It's important to that, it's important to the Rocks Pirates, it's important to, of course, the Blackbeard Pirates. A final showdown between the Blackbeard Pirates and Straw Hat Pirates there would make sense. So that could be a full arc on its own, unless the island itself can just be moved by Pizarro's powers and they can just move the whole island to use as their ship and the Blackbeard Pirates are going to be saved for Laugh Tale itself. There is that. And I think the only thing left, uh, Lodestar, I think we should stop at, even if it's just a short. I think I'm, Jaya was pretty short, but Logetown was only like 6 to 11-ish chapters. Like, Logetown was extremely short. So it could be something similar to Logetown, where Lodestar is extremely, extremely short. But I do think we should visit it, because that's where all of the islands, where all of the different pathways, all of the log poses, they all conjoin together. Um... It was Inuara she told Nami, I think, back on Zo that you don't necessarily need to go there, but it is the last known island. It is where all of this stuff converges, and it's the last known island, and the only thing past it is wherever the heck Laugh Tale is, and then the back of Reverse Mountain. So, with all of that in mind, then I, th I think we should stop at Lodestar. Maybe it'll, like, I was thinking even just stop for a couple chapters, but it could be a more important, like, given that it is the last official island and everything before getting to Laugh Tale, it could be actually more important than I'm thinking. And then, of course, we get into Laugh Tale and the big finale. So, yeah, I think that's all we really have left. Elbaf, which might not be long, the moon, which might not be long, is my guess, and then Hachinosu, if we do end up going there, which, again, would just be mostly a battle arc, I would think, just the final battle between the Straw Hats and the, uh, and the Blackbeard Pirates, and then, of course, the, um, I think we should stop at Lodestar. Then, you know, we have our Laugh Tale, we have our finale, and who knows how long that either of those last, but you figure, given Final Wars and other long-running shonen, depending on how many of these contenders we eliminate in the arcs before we get to there, uh, it could be extremely long, because, I mean, 
One, one Piece tends to get there. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot for us to learn. But with the long Haku intro aside, let's see what I got in this week's um in this week's bingo card, and then start reading. So for those of you again, anybody that might be new. The uh, bingo card generator is always in the comments and description. I update it after every week. Because we're like getting into this between arc stuff and some of the stuff that I had for Egghead might not be as applicable anymore. I did a lot of changes to it this week. So there's a lot of potential options you could get. And of course, your options are going to be randomized. So you might not get the same ones as me. And of course, they might be in a totally, totally different order than mine. But it lets me put something on screen while we're reacting. And it lets us talk about something while we're going through. It's an extra added fun thing. So if you want to play along too, you can generate your own card in the comments or description. Or if you just want to play while you're reading on your own uh, you can always look for whenever I post the links to it so there is that so yeah I guess that's about it I just wanted to say that I uh, I made a bunch of changes this time around because of how we're changing things so my card this time we have Wano piece which is if we see Wano oh yeah too we have um if we are still continuing with the Wano Yamato cover story I think that that could maybe tie into whatever happened with Big Mom and Kaido. They could be related to that. Kind of like when we had the new Mads rescue, like, Caesar and Vinsmoke cover story. We also use that to tie in Kuzan going and getting um, pudding and everything. So there were important things that were tied into that. And I think, again, here there might be some important things like what happened to... Uh, Big Mom and Kaido tied into the Wano cover story. Uh, we have Revolution. I had before Revolutionaries other than Kuma, but because of the way things are going now, I just put Revolutionary. That way, if we see Kuma, it counts, but I don't think we're going to be seeing him too much more after the next couple chapters. I don't know, though. Uh, but if we see, you know, Dragon, Sabo, any of them, Revolutionary is a good space to have. Uh, Nika mentioned, Zoan Transformation, Named Attack, Joy Boy mentioned, Any Island Other Than Egghead, New Name Devil Fruit, Devil Fruit Awakening, Thousand Sunny, Kid Pirates, Bounty Reveal. I, I don't know if we'll get any new bounties. I feel like it's too soon to get new bounties again since we just got them after Wano. But it's not completely off the table. Free space, which we can click. Cypher Pole, Seraphim, Gorose, Vivi Wappler Morgans, Cross Guild, Any Straw Member, Flashback, Admiral Yonko, Pacifista, Blood Sweater Tears, and Silhouetted Character. So I didn't get either of them. Oh no, I did get Kid Pirates. Okay. I did have Lar Kid as an option for a while, but since now we're going to Elbeth, presumably, and we don't know what's going on with Law and Beppo, we don't know if we're gonna run into Kid just stranded in the ocean on the way to Elbaf or anything, I separated, um, I separated Lar Kid into two separate spaces. I gave us Kid Pirates for if we run into Kid or any of his crew, and Heart Pirates if we run into Law or any of his crew. So, I separated those into two separate spaces. But either way, let's start reading while we're playing through. This one is chapter 1123, The Void Fortnite, which is, I don't know what it's referring to, but I would assume it's like a play on words, a reference to The Void Century, only uh, talking about a span of two weeks. We have a bunch of kids eating with Yamato and Denjiro. Uh, Oni Child Yamato in the Holy Inari Shrine Pilgrimage, Volume 11, Enemies Forced to Share Odin. That's a cute one. And then, of course, though, we have... Oh, and it's cute, Enemies Forced to Share Odin, because those were the kids that were, like, throwing rocks and everything. And now they're all eating together. Okay. So we did get Wano Piece. We got a couple things pretty early on. We got Wano Piece. We got Any Island Other than Egghead. Oh, wow. We're killing it here. And we have food. I didn't get food, though. Okay, well, if you got food, you can cross that off. Do we have Blood Sweater Tears in here? Eh, it doesn't look like it, really. Okay. So let's continue on, then. Into the actual chapter. Egghead Island Respond. The Aftermath of Hockey. And we have the Sunny and the giant ship sailing away. What's your status? All the randoms are knocked out. 
Wake up, you guys. Straw hats are seraphim existing. So, even the vice admirals are knocked out. So, this is Conqueror Saki strong enough that even after all this time, it can knock out vice admirals. That's crazy, though. We have um, S Snake. We haven't seen Seraphim exist in so long, it feels like. So, Doll's there as well. Not really. Well, I guess we have Sweat on um, S Snake. I was going to say, we don't really have Blood, Sweat, or Tears. We just have people frothing at the mouth. But no, with that, we got we got a few things here. We got Seraphim. I do have Seraphim. I don't know. We had thousands on A. That's true. Then is that? No, we don't have any of these yet. Just scroll. Just glancing through. Do we? Nah, we didn't see any straw hats specifically yet. Um, we do have blood, sweat, or tears. Do. Should I, uh, Pacifista, I think I should maybe get rid of. I don't think I should count Seraphim as Pacifista, because when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about, like, regular Pacifista. Sorry, hiccup. Okay, now we're seeing one of the giants. Wow, all of them are down. Seriously, that's amazing. That was greater than red hairs, but it didn't seem hostile, did it? And then, so yeah, this is interesting. It didn't seem hostile, so it's like it's not hostile to them, so it doesn't knock them out, but it knocks out their enemies here. Then Luffy's laughing. Thanks for everything, Iron Giant. We see Emeth left behind. She, she, she. And he laughs, but it seems like the eyes are still gone, so Emeth might be just consciousness faded from here. Alrighty, let's go while they're sleeping. We're getting out of here. Ga ba ba ba. Hee hee, you heard the captains. Let's go, you bastards. We're off to Elbaf. Yeah, okay, so it does seem, it seems pretty certain that unless we really get diverted, we're going to Elbaf. Also, there's so many things that we could potentially see in this between arc stuff. We still don't know what's going on with um, Marco and Bakin going to try to rescue... Uh, Weevil when he was captured. We don't know what's happening with that. So yeah, there are so many different things. We see Bonnie unconscious with presumably uh, Kuma and Zoro, Usopp, <laughs> and uh, Chopper as well with Dorian Brogy. <laughs> the desiccated uh, falling out of Gear Fifth Luffy with Nami. And then Sanji with Stella's body. Vegapunk. What you said earlier isn't sitting right with me. Was this all some sort of gotcha moment for you? Hey now, I couldn't follow everything you were saying, but it was pretty outrageous, wasn't it? I like that it's Sanji getting this moment, because it feels like he doesn't really get this kind of respect most of the time in post-time skip. Sanji's usually a bigger clown than Caesar in post-time skip, but pre-time skip, whenever we had some of these types of moments... um like in the early to mid, you know, paradise section of the Grand Line, it was always Sanji with these kind of things. So I like that he's getting this here. But, uh, okay, we're going into a flashback so I can mark flashback. I want to mark off a couple things because I haven't stopped in a couple pages. Uh, we did get, uh, I guess we didn't really get a Zoan transformation, unless we just count any time we see Chopper. And I really don't think Gear Fifth should count but gear fifth does count as devil fruit awakening that counts for sure i guess i guess we can count revolutionary because we see a chunk of kuma you know then joy boy wasn't specifically mentioned cypher pole no i i swear there's probably more maybe some of you got some more things than i got we got a flashback in any straw member so now we just need a silhouette okay and then yonko of course because of Luffy. Okay, again, I'm only human. I might miss some things. But I think that's what we got right now. Egghead two weeks prior. There are some anomalous, or there are some anomalous readings coming from the power station. You can say that again. Monitor for any fluctuations in particle density and neutron flux. The energy used by the Seraphim is meant to gradually increase over time. This could be a grave error if we miscalculate. Also, it is interesting. I talked a lot of shit about the Seraphim 
pretty much not being used in Egghead, but they could be doing this on purpose to just give us a taste of the Seraphim, but much like York survived, so now we have um now we have Lilith going with the straw hats, and we have York going with the navy Gorose, presumably then we can also have the Seraphim survive. And then because in whatever time they were born, they already grew up to this like child state, like eight to 10 year old looking state, maybe a little bit older, then maybe by the time we get to the final arc or whatever, we're going to have the adult Seraphim at that point, maybe. Maybe this was just a taste and then, you know, they're going to be even more grown up by the time that we actually face them in the final arc or something. Uh, but that just reminded me, because they were talking about Shaka saying, The energy used by the Seraphims gradually, or meant to gradually increase over time. This could be a grave error if we miscalculated. Wait, aren't these numbers different from our earlier confirmed readings? Yes, and the rate of reaction is increasing too, but the power station seems stable. The status seems to indicate that someone's tampered with the Mother Flame to steal its energy. Every single data point related to the power station has been carefully modified. To pull this off, the culprit has to be... A Vegapunk. Was it Lilith? <laughs> and immediately, um, Stella thinks it's Lilith. I'm afraid the three of us are the only ones with ironclad alibis. Okay, so this is going back to fill in, like, how this whole thing was organized. The whole thing that, uh, York was surprised by. An insane amount of energy was stolen, so we have to observe the other four to determine who's responsible. Especially Lilith. We have to put our brains into offline stealth mode, too. That's right, if our memories of this get uploaded uh, to Punk Records, then Lilith, I mean, the culprit, will know we're onto them. And it is neat that they're all, th or at least Stella is thinking that, I don't know if this is all of them or just Stella, but they're thinking that Lilith is most likely the culprit, but then it's neat that York, the culprit, is the one going with the bad guys now, but Lilith, who they thought was the culprit, is the one surviving one to go with the good guys. One, be er, one week before the present. Attention, I've identified the culprit. It's York. What? And then both Shaka and Stella are surprised. The memories she's been synchronizing with punk records are phony. I've also confirmed that the surveillance snails at the scene of the crime were tampered with, too. Why would she do such a thing? And... My bad, Lilith. <laughs> and I've also found evidence that suggests someone deployed the weapon I see beast without authorization. Ja er, a jamming white transponder snail was also found in our investigation. I know, we can reconstruct the call data directly from our long distance transponder snail. And then... Dr. Vegapunk is researching the void century. She rang Mary Wa? No wonder Cypherbolt keeps coming to snoop around here. Six days before the present, the kingdom of Lulucia has been erased. The details are still a bit foggy, but I have a bad feeling about this. Pythagoras, observe any changes to the sea levels and monitor all wireless transmissions. Yes, sir. Do you think this has something to do with the theft of the Mother Flame? I'm sure of it. That portion of the flame must have been delivered to the government by one of the weaponized sea beasts. If you permit me to indulge in pure conjecture... It seems plausible that the world government possesses one of the ancient weapons, and they must have needed the Mother Flame energy that York stole to fuel it. We'll see if the evidence supports my conclusion. Even if this deduction is sound, it's hard to speak it aloud. It's my fault, after all. Only a fool lets their greed run amok, and I went and personified mine. So... This is kind of confirmation that she is personification of his greed. So Lilith is kind of personification of his evil. <laughs> then, is there any benefit to apprehending York now that we know? No, it's too late for that. York's motives are irrelevant now. They'll still come to erase anyone who knows of the Void Century. Yeah, it's already too late, so they have to big brain it. York already demonstrated her worth to them by rashly handing over the Mother Flame. The best that we can do is use that trust as an opportunity to determine their intent for the flame and try to mitigate the damage. I do like that both York as the schemer, the one who planned all this, and who really in the end kind of got away with it, is being, like, York's presented as being really smart as one of the Vegapunks, but I like that the other Vegapunks aren't just totally naive or dumb. They also had their own plans. I like that. 
The best we can do is use that trust as an opportunity to determine their intent for the flame and try to mitigate the damage. Stella, we still have a chance to escape if we flee now, says Shaka. Prepare a boat for the other residents, er, residents, Quasar. It, it seems like it's been forever since he actually used a speech tick. They still have a shot of escaping Egghead, but it'll be impossible for us. The Navy will have issued secret orders to every branch and base by now. They'll chase us to the ends of the world, and our inevitable deaths will be meaningless. At least, here on Egghead, we have something O'Hara didn't 22 years ago. We have the means and the equipment to amplify our voices as far and wide as possible. What exactly is the world government? The closer I get, the more shrouded it becomes. If I must die, I'll sell my life dearly. So again, I love this. Instead of trying to run off, he's like, we're going to get killed. O'Hara got killed. But O'Hara, before they got killed, didn't have the chance to tell everybody what they knew. So even if Fagapunk doesn't know anything, he can at least go out telling everybody what he can which i think is like really good writing i'm actually again unless he ends up getting will of peed and survives somehow because we see that sanji has his body unless it turns out that he's somehow still alive i love the idea of having vegapunk die off but spread the world like spread the world's lore to the world before he does or as he does or, I mean, I guess technically after he does, given that it was a dead man switch. But I really, really like the writing of that. Like, it's such a good way for Oda, who we've known about Vegapunk for so long, it's such a good way to finally use Vegapunk now that he's here. I apologize for wrapping you two into all this. Don't be silly. We're Vegapunks, just like you. We're all thinking the same thing. Just one issue, Stella. What exactly constitutes death for someone like us? Good point. There is one other thing we must safeguard. So again, they're kind of bringing that up because we have the big actual central brain and punk records. Is that going to get destroyed? Like, what's the deal with that? And if Stella dies, does that mean that York and Lilith die too? Or can Stella die? Can the original brain die? But Lilith and York live on as their own separate beings, they just don't have a connection to punk records anymore. There is one other thing we must safeguard. Our cloud loft technology to manufacture artificial island clouds. It may be pivotal in saving humanity in the near future. True, if the ocean, like, rises, then people would have to move on to sky islands. Huh? Stella, what are you doing here? And we have... She's so cute. I mean, I know she's the bad guy, but, like, I can't resist the charms. We've got best girl York seeing Stella with Emmeth. How is that you, York? You know, same old, same old. And, again, it's probably him when he's hiding the uh, transponder snail. If our experiments to optimize the Mother Flame will allow this thing to move again, it'd be a big breakthrough in creating our ideal energy source. That's right. It'd be amazing if we achieve that soon. Right? I can only pray it never gets perfected. Two days before the present. Go ahead and speak now. The recording's begun. And then, okay, so they recorded it two days before. And then, this is Dr. Vega, Vegapunk, and we're going into his message. The world's greatest and most humble scientific genius. <laughs> what we said will come as a big shock, right? And we have it afterward. Maybe, but everyone has a right to know the truth. No one will ever expect the transponder snail to be hidden here. My death will trigger the message to be sent out worldwide. Okay, so Stella is dying. But it's weird, because if we're taking Lilith with us, and she survives, even if Punk Record or her connection to it's destroyed, then it's weird that we didn't get more Lilith content. It's I don't know. I kind of wish we got more emotion from her, more backstory from her. But it is what it is. I'm sure we'll maybe get some more in the future or something. Who knows? We need to ensure that no one finds out till it's too late. Any abnormality in our behavior could be a tip-off that spoils our plans. Erasing our own memories is the safest bet. And I love this too because it explains why Shaka and Stella then didn't know about the betrayal when it was going on. That said, there will be consequences. 
well, I'll, like I hated the idea that Stella was just acting the whole time, so I love that it is actually his memories have been erased. That said, there will be consequences. We'll, all, or we'll lose all memories related to this matter. The fact that York stole the Mother Flame. The fact that our lives are currently at stake. We'll have to suffer through all those bombshells all over again. Indeed. The fear we feel for our lives will be brand new to us. But we have our countermeasures in place. Even if things go sideways, it'll still be our victory. Then, the Memory Mass Research Lab. What are we doing here? And they all wake up without their memories. This is my handwriting. Good morning, everybody. You'll find that you three have, er, have a missing fortnight's worth of memories that were wiped of your own volition, hence the title. A number of things will probably come as a surprise because of this, which is ironically pretty amusing. Huh? I'll tell you one thing, though. The world governments er, found out about our research into the Void Century. Ah, huh, they found out? Am I really telling myself to go die? I have taken the best precautions possible. You'll just have to put your faith in me and die. Oh, and one last thing. Stella, Emperor Straw Hat's crew and Bonnie have just made landfall. What? Cypher Pole's approaching too. What? There's also a naval armada coming to blockade the island. What? <laughs> this is so good. Admiral Kizaru and Elder Saint Saturn seem to be with them. What? I, I love this. That's so good. That's such a fun scene. After we rescue Bonnie from down there, I think it'd be best if I stayed put. And we see back when they were on the car heading down with Sanji and Frankie. Huh? You'll die. You don't need er, to help me escape anymore. I've thought about it. Just let me die here. What? Do you have a death wish? Far from it. But I've come to believe that my death will set something important into motion. <gasps> Vegapunk is so cool. I really... Like, I ended up really liking him because of this whole sacrifice to tell the truth. It's so good. And if he had any guilt like we saw before from his experiments being used for evil, it's like this is such a good, like, act of good to go out on. This is gonna be a big mess. We can't just sit there and watch you die. We've gotta do something. One more thing. It's about the One Piece? What about it? I want you guys to be the ones who find it. Man, that's so good. I got goosebumps. Here's to reuniting with old friends. Cheers, and we have our after arc party. Hold on, do this later. Wait for me. And Lu Luffy's still all dried out from using Gear Fifth. Who? We're off to the land of my dreams, Elbaf. Ga ba ba ba. Ga 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 ga. Thinking two moves ahead. Chapter 1123 End. That was another incredibly well-written chapter. I know there are people who aren't going to like it because they're like, but my punching, but my power scaling. But writing-wise, this was a really good one. I just, I really wish that Egghead's full story, the full breadth of it, had had the level of writing that some of the high points and that the ending had. Because, man, this ending section, probably over a dozen chapters now at least, have been stellar. They have been incredibly, incredibly good. Uh, before I continue, though, let's actually see, do I have any, <laughs> do I actually have anything more to fill in? Do I even have a silhouetted character? I mean, we might, te like, technically, but there's none of those where it's like, oh, a silhouette and you're supposed to try to guess who it is. None of that kind of silhouetted character. Um, we have Cypherpole mentioned that they're coming. I don't know if we ever really see it on screen. Same with Named Attack, Zoan Transformation. I don't think they mention Nika and Joy Boy, really. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's anything more. I don't even think, yeah, we had Gorose and Admiral mentioned, but I don't think we actually saw any. Same with Pacifista, if you're not counting Seraphim, which, you know, if you're one spot off and want to count Pacifista... Like, one account Seraphim for Pacifista. If that'll give you a bingo, you know, maybe go for it. But I think I just came up a little bit short this time around. And that might happen more often, depending on how much we jump around. But that was an incredible, incredible arc ending. And not only was this arc ending incredible, but I am so excited to move into the future, because it's not like we're just going to get a boring chapter next week. We're entering the between arc stuff. And the between arc stuff, this is where we're going to be jumping around and seeing some really exciting stuff. We did that a lot during Egghead, but I think we're just going to 
keep doing so here. And going into Elbaf, we might do that a bunch in Elbaf. Because we're in the final saga now, we might get these cutaways from Elbaf to see cool stuff happening around the world of One Piece. So... I'm incredibly excited, like I mentioned in the intro, and as I discussed reading through, there's so much on the table. There's so much for us to see, and it's a very, very exciting time to read for me right now. I loved this. I hope that you enjoyed it. It's a bit of a longer one. There was a lot to talk about, and I was really excited for it. So I'm going to hurry up, go and try to get this posted for patrons and channel members, and then I will get it all public for you in, you know, probably less than, like, definitely less than 24 hours whenever I wake up tomorrow on Sunday. I'll be getting this publicly up for all of you. But I guess that's it. I guess that's it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching. Um, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this chapter and my thoughts and reaction to it. Subscribe for more One Piece, much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. If you want to link to the Discord server, it's free and open for anyone. This is making me want to catch up to the One Piece anime. I don't know. I'm really excited for One Piece. And I've kind of been like rewatch slash reading Bleach. I've been going back through Bleach and it's kind of making me think of the big three some more. I kind of want to catch up to the anime. This is really sort of motivating me a little bit. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Follow on Twitter if you want. If you want to link to the Discord server, it's free and open for anyone. If you want to help support the channel by dropping a super thanks, it is appreciated. Uh, I mentioned before, description and uh, description and comments will have a link to generate your own bingo card if you want to play. Um, and you know, if you want to support the channel by dropping a super thanks, that is appreciated. But if you want to not just help support the channel, keep videos coming and everything, if you want to also get your name at the end of every video and get these One Piece videos a little bit early, usually, hopefully like Thursday, depending on if the scans actually come out. But it's a little bit late, or a little bit late this week because it didn't come out on Thursday for me. And then yesterday, I'll be real with you, I completely, totally forgot. So if you want these earlier than usual, then become a patron or channel member by going to patreon.com slash aqua of the tubes or a link will be in the description or hitting join down below or yeah hitting join down below to become a member thank you to people who are already patrons and channel members like i said you also get your name at the end of these videos thank you to chosen regular evan holly magical girls efron ono abyss knight ja vd van and irony Cheriton students david langstaff and folded ghoul slayer candidates sg and stan cedar and pure element pate Ardeal. thank you so so much for your support thank you so much for watching if anything sounded off here I'll notice it in editing, but uh, there was an OBS update and it completely nuked all my settings, so I had to go back through and reset all my settings. Uh, so if there's anything off audio-wise, because the audio levels look weird on my OBS screen, um, if there is any issue with that, then hopefully I'll fix it for my next video. I'll notice it in editing. Thank you so much, though. I just want to apologize if it is weird, but thank you, and I'll see you all next time.